My secret to success is determination and maybe consistency. Just being determined, you know, whenever things are tough and continue consistently doing something if you think it works. My name is Innocent Mtanga. I am from Zimbabwe. I came to Hong Kong about seven years ago as a refugee. So I was homeless uh, the first few months. Now I run a social enterprise called the Africa Centre Hong Kong and I also work as an analyst for an investment bank. When I was in Zimbabwe, there was elections at that particular point. Um, the presidential elections and parliamentary elections at the same time. Uh, so I, I was going around you know, educating people on their choices, uh, on voting, um, and uh, the policies uh, that each candidate is proposing. And that didn't sit well with the government then. Uh, and then, they, you know, after you know, several threats to my life, including being kidnapped, which I escaped, and then that's how I left. So when I got to the airport, I just had to find the place that I could go without having to look for a visa. And Hong Kong was on the list, uh, and then I came. When I got off from the, um, you know, from the airport, uh, you know, the immigration officer asking me, oh, where are you going to stay? Which hotel? I mean, I really didn't know. I think she was just like, oh, are you going to Chongqing mansions? You know? Uh, but for me, I don't think I can afford a mansion. So I arrived, you know, and then I'm like, oh, what a mansion. It's a very, very different type of mansion. Welcome to the rooftop. The place to get all the best views, secret place. I stayed in Chunky Mansions for a few days. Money ran out, you know, I only had 200 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, and then the things didn't turn out well, and then I was homeless. After living in Chongqing and Mirado Mansion, uh, this is the place I stayed, you know, after, you know, I spent the day in the library, and then in the night I would just come and sleep over here. This was my five-star hotel. You know, this was my chance to learn, you know, because when you're at the bottom of the society, you can understand more about people around you and the society itself, because people tend to treat you with very little respect sometimes, if you are sleeping outside. Later on, and then I started sitting in, in classes in the university around Hong Kong, take local exams in high school and uh, pass them, and then uh, apply to go to university. Just compete like everybody else. Then later on, uh, uh, after you know, going through university, a year or so later, I got granted a student visa, which is anyone, like any other student, international student. So it's not really a refugee status, it's a, it's a visa, like a residence uh, visa. It was not easy, it was a lot of work involved, and then that's when I ended up getting it. The immigration is trying to change the law to make it harder for refugees to come as well as to go through the process. I mean, for the refugee issue, you know, if I can be very honest with you, you know, it's a systemic issue. You know, Hong Kong did not sign the, uh, the Refugee Convention 
they don't classify anybody as a refugee here in Hong Kong. They classify as either an overstayer or an illegal immigrant. What that means, it means you are already a criminal. If you're a criminal, it implies that you can easily be deported. And you, as a criminal, you don't have rights. So given that as the starting point, everything else is not going to be in the good position. A refugee is treated worse than a criminal because a criminal at least has a, a right to have a lawyer that actually stand for them. But uh, the lawyers that refugees usually have, they don't defend. So usually we have to assist. You know, maybe in a week there's always one or two cases that I'm working on. Well, I guess from my experience working with the immigration, I've also in the government departments, I've also accumulated enough knowledge to, you know, working knowledge to be able to assist with some of the cases people are going through. Yeah, we also run some programs that people pay as well. We're trying to change the perception Africans cannot do things without help, you know. Yeah. It's just, you have to work hard. It's just, you just have to work hard. That's really inspirational. Yeah, yeah, so we just have to do that, you know. I mean, they have come, banks, government departments, like, oh, we give you money. Oh, you refuse? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's like Africans just need all this stuff. I'm like, you know, we can do things by ourselves. Three, two, one, we go! Go! The idea really came from how people see Africans, you know, how people see black people who need donations, or people think of us as equal partners. Are people scared of us? You know, so to challenge that, you know, you need to rebrand. Um, so we do education events, we do food related events. So we do all these uh, different things, of course, drumming workshops, people like to play the drums. And then we do, we do a lot, number of other activities in schools and corporations. Come Part of human nature that if someone is strange to you, you feel uncomfortable and you get biased. But if you get used to seeing people around who look different from you when you grow up, if you learn more and understand them better, those stereotypes, they, they don't appear. The events are becoming more and more crowded, so I guess he already raised interest among uh, the local people to African culture, to Af African countries. Well, the recipe is from my friend's great, 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 great mouth. I don't think I'm special in any way. Um, I see myself as tiny little things that have done tiny little things, you know, that still need to work a lot more harder. I think my life has been worth living. Um, you know, I think there's still a lot more things that I still need to work on. I still, I still have a mission to go. I think for any refugees, I think what I can say is, um, don't give your life to anybody. Nobody is going to really help you. You know, you really need to take things in your hands. If there is anybody who comes to assist, they are only assisting on the mission that you think that you already established and moving forward to that. And be your own driver. 
If any helpers, let them come to assist what you're driving. You know, let nobody, uh, you know, there is no, no one is going to be there to take over your life and help you.